Today I'm going to show you how to make a minimalist movie poster like this. I'm going to show you how you can do this in Photoshop. Usually this sort of digital art is done in Adobe Illustrator, but I thought I'd make this tutorial for those of you who just have Photoshop. You don't even need to be particularly good at art. I'm definitely not good at drawing at all, but can still make a decent minimalist movie poster. And I'm sure after watching this tutorial, more experienced artists will be able to make a poster that surpasses my efforts here. But anyway, it's a really fun thing to sit and do and pass the time. So let's just jump into Photoshop and get started. So I've opened up the image I'm going to work with, a photo of Gene Wilder from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You can do this with whatever movie image you like, but it's best to try and use as large an image as you can. The more pixels the better, as you'll be able to zoom in more and get more detail in your outline. So first of all you need to select the pen tool. You can select it from the toolbar on the left hand side, or click P on the keyboard for the shortcut. Now we're going to be using the pen tool to draw the outline of the figure. It will be the main tool we use when making our minimalist drawing. So to use the pen tool, click on the first point. It's a good idea to start either at the bottom or top edge of the image. Then click on the next point, but this time don't let go of the mouse. This will allow you to curve the line to the shape of the outline by moving the mouse in the desired direction. It might take some practice if you've never used the pen tool before to get the desired curve. But as I said at the beginning, anyone can do this with some practice and I'm sure many of you will surpass my efforts. After you're happy with the curve of the second point, let go of the mouse and then while holding down the ALT key, click the point again to deselect it. Now you can click on the next point and repeat this, working your way around the outline. It doesn't matter which way you go and don't worry about closing the shape by joining the first and last dots. Just work your way around the outline in any way you please. I think I'm going to work my way around the left of the jacket, then round the bow tie. If you aren't happy with a point, just click Command Z or Control Z in a PC to undo it and replace the point. You also don't have to be spot on with your lines as it's a minimalist outline we're after, but try and replicate the shapes as close as you can. Now I'm reaching one of my previous points of the outline, I'm going to fill this line in before moving on. So to do this, get your final point as close to the previous point as you can. That should do it for me. Now hit B in the keyboard to switch over from the pen tool to the brush tool. We want to change the size of the brush to something between 6 and 12 pixels. This will depend on the original size of your image, so some trial and error might be required here, but you'll be able to tell what size you need after the next step. Also make sure that the opacity is set to 100% and also change the flow to 100%. And lastly, make sure your brush is set to the colour black, which mine is. Now switch back to the pen tool by hitting P on your keyboard and go down and create a new layer. With this there selected, I'm then going to go back to the pen line and right click and then select stroke path. Make sure the tool is set to brush and hit OK. Now this is going to paint in the line with the settings we set our brush to. So now if we hide the original image, we can see the part of the outline we have drawn. Now this is where you can see if the thickness of your brush looks good for the size of the image. I'm happy with that thickness, so I'm just going to stick with that. If your line is too thick or not thick enough, just undo the stroke path and go back to your brush, adjust the thickness, then try again, doing this until you're happy with the brush size. Now fill in the gap. You can do this by selecting the brush and carefully drawing the line, or you could use the pen tool again and do a small stroke path. I'm just going to use the brush. I'm also going to rename this layer and call it outline. Now it's just a case of repeating this process for every bit of detail you want to capture an image, drawing an outline with the pen and creating a stroke path with the brush as you go along. For things like hair, you only need to follow the rough outline. Gene Wilder's hair is crazy and wispy, so I'm not going to be too precious about the lines. I'm just going to try and roughly represent it. That's it getting there. I'm just going to add a line to mark the shirt join. I'm not going to follow the pattern for this as it's too wild. I'm just going to add a line that I think will work. 
Now all I need to do is fill in the last details in the bow tie. And that's us got our outline. So now I've got my outline, it's time to start colouring it in. So I'm going to start by making a new layer. I'm going to be making a new layer for each component. So the jacket will be its own layer, the face, the hat, etc. So let's make a new layer for the jacket. Now select the magic wand tool, hit W on the keyboard for the shortcut. Now make sure you still have the outline layer selected, then click on the part of the image you want to fill in. In this case, the jacket has four sections I want to fill. To fill multiple sections, hold down shift and click the next one and repeat until you've selected everything you want. Now if you zoom in, it's likely that there's a small gap between the outline and the magic wand selection. I don't want this as I want to fill everything within the outline in. To fix this, go up to select and drop down to modify and then click expand. This will expand our selection by the number of pixels we choose. Around four should do it. Hit OK and you'll see that the magic wand edges are much closer to the outline now. It's maybe not quite there yet at a few bits, so I'm going to undo that and go back in and make it five pixels this time. That looks better. Once you have your selection, turn the original layer back on and click G in the keyboard for the paint bucket tool. If you hold down Alt, you'll get the eyedropper tool and you'll be able to copy the colour you want by clicking on it. Now make sure you've selected the new layer that you've just created. You don't want to do this in the outline. Then just click with the paint bucket tool and it will fill in the colour. There you go, the first colour is filled. If you're not happy with the colour, you can undo it and reselect a different part with the eyedropper tool. I'm going to see what it looks like when I select a lighter part of the jacket. I think that's maybe too light, so I'm going to go up to the colour palette and change it manually. I'm going to split the difference and make it darker again. That's better. Now you might have little bits at the edges of the outline that have been missed, like this one. To fix this, just select the paint brush tool and carefully paint in the spaces. You can increase and decrease the size of your brush by clicking the square brackets in your keyboard. And just do the same for all the small areas that have been missed by the fill. And that's all there is to it. Now it's just a case of repeating this process for each element in the drawing. So I'll make a new layer for the jacket seam. Go back to the outline and select both selections with the magic wand tool by clicking while holding down shift. Then go to select and expand the selection by about four or five pixels. Then turn the original layer back on, click G for the paint bucket tool and select the color you want by holding down alt and clicking on it. Then make sure you select the new layer and just fill in the color and then go in and paint with a brush any missed parts. And just keep repeating this till you've filled in every part. I'm going to speed the video forward here as I do each part of the poster, but it's just a repetition of each of these steps for each new section. Although here I think it looks a bit strange at the moment as I haven't put any separation between the face and the neck. So I'm just going to delete that there just now and go back to my outline and add that in. That's all filled in now. Now I'm just going to go and fill any bits that the paint bucket tool has missed.
Then I'm going to create a new layer for the background and choose a colour for that. And that's basically it. You can go in and change the colours of any part to your liking by just going into that layer and changing the colour. You can stylize it any way you like and add text or whatever to create your minimalist movie poster. But that's essentially the technique. So there you go. That's how you make a minimalist movie poster in Photoshop. If you're trying it out yourself, post your results on Instagram and tag me in it. I'd love to see what you create and I'm sure many of you will have made a better poster than I did here. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.